What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with part two of my series on creating this uh, segmented wood bowl. So uh, today we're going to use extensions to give this depth and we're also going to render it. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So uh, first thing you're going to need is you're going to need a couple extensions to come in here and do this. Uh, the first that you're going to need is uh, called Joint Push Pull. Um, you're also going to need an extension called Twilight Render. Um, that's going to be the free rendering software that we're going to use. And uh, I've made some videos about that in the past. And then uh, we're also going to use an extension called SubD. You can also use an extension called Artisan um, in, order to, in order to smooth this bowl out. I will note that those extensions are paid extensions, so you will need those for that step. You can kind of skip that step, but um, it leaves your faces kind of blocky and segmented looking. But um, that is something that you're going to probably want in order to do this all the way through. If you don't want to do that, then uh, you can just kind of leave it as is. But anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to come in here. And if you remember, we have our bowl from yesterday that has half of half of our faces kind of segmented in here. And then uh, the other half is just kind of this single face just like this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to extrude this using the extension Joint Push Pull um, in order to give this bowl some depth. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here, we're going to select our whole bowl, and uh, we're actually going to come in here and we're going to deselect these bottom two faces. So you can just hold the shift key, you can just hold the shift key to deselect these faces down here, um, click on these two faces, so now you have everything except this face selected, because if you have this selected then it's not going to work the way that it's supposed to. So come in here and select all of your faces up here just like this, and then we're just going to use joint push pull. We're going to use the first option on here, which allows you to push pull multiple faces. And you're just going to click and drag just a little bit. And you can see how this is going to extrude all of your faces out at once and kind of fill in. It'll fill in the geometry around that. So everything kind of push pulls out, but now you've got kind of depth for your bowl just like this. So once you've done that, you can click out a joint push pull. And uh, so now you've got a bowl that's got kind of some depth to it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here, we're going to select our whole bowl, we're going to right click on it, and we're going to click make group. And uh, what we're going to do with this now is we're going to use the extension sub D to come in here and subdivide this. And basically what that means is if you look in here right now, basically this bowl is made up of a whole bunch of like quad faces in here, um, which is really good for sub D actually, because um, if you look at it, um, each one of these is basically a rectangle and it's got a whole bunch of them in a circle to make up your bowl. Well, what sub D is going to do is that's going to come in here and that's going to subdivide this to make it look smoother. Because you can see how this looks kind of blocky right now with the number of polygons that are in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn hidden geometry back off and then uh, we're going to put everything here in a group. Then you're just going to come up here to sub D and you're going to click this toggle subdivision on off. So just click on it just like this. And it's going to take a second because it's going to come in here and it's going to subdivide all these faces. But uh, what it's going to do is that's going to take up some memory while it does that because that creates a bunch of different faces in here. But you can see how what this did is this just kind of jumped in here. You can see how now these are a lot smoother. You can see how these edges in here... Um, this isn't just made of one big rectangle anymore. So if I turn hidden geometry on, you can see how it split all of these faces to make a much smoother faces, just like this. And the nice thing about the way sub D did that is it kept all the textures mapped where they were before. So we don't need to worry about that. All the textures kind of stayed the same, but now we've got a much smoother bowl. All right, so now that we've got our bowl kind of uh, roughed out like this um, with kind of the smoother faces and everything else, now we're gonna come in here and we're gonna render this. And the rendering is probably a, uh, it's, it's a couple step process. So like right now, if we were to come in here and uh, activate the render um, tools in here in Twilight Render, we'd come in here and we'd do kind of a preliminary render just like this, just to kind of see what everything's gonna look like. So you come in here, you run a quick render on the preliminary preset, um, just so it'll come in here and it'll do that as fast as possible. And you can see how that's gonna sit here and it's gonna take a second to come in here and do that, especially because of the number of faces that we have in here. All right, so you can see this looks okay. Um, I mean, it's it's got kind of a shadow coming across here. It's got your materials in here a little bit. I mean, obviously it was on the preliminary settings, but um, what we need to do is we need to come in here and we need to adjust our light and we need to adjust our material settings in order to make this look a little bit more uh, realistic. 
All right, so what we need to do, since we did our kind of preliminary render in there, is we need to come in here and we need to adjust our materials. So in order to do that in Twilight Render, you're gonna use this little paint bucket looking thing called Template Materials. And uh, you're just gonna open this up and we're just gonna make a couple quick changes in here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna sample our different materials just like this. So we're gonna click on the eyedropper and then click on a face in order to select a material. And what this is gonna do is this will give us a little preview over here to the side of what this material is gonna look like. And what we wanna do is we wanna use a template in here. We wanna use a wood high gloss template. So you select a material, click the drop down, and then select your high gloss template just like this. And the other thing we wanna adjust on here is we wanna adjust the bump. Because what we want is we want Twilight Render to give this a little bit of a bump based on where the texture is kind of bumpy. So if you come down here and you select SketchUp for the bump, it's gonna give this a little bit of roughness um, everywhere where there's a little bit of interest in your material. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna make this look really realistic. So you can see how it looks a little bit bumpier right here along the lines of our material. So we're just gonna sample each one of our materials and do the same thing. We're gonna give each one of them a wood veneer template or a wood template, so wood, high gloss. We're gonna change our bump map to SketchUp. And then once we do that, we'll come in here and we'll uh, run another test render. And the other trick in here is if these are all the materials that you have in your model, then you can actually click this drop down and see every material in your model and select the ones that don't have a template applied to them yet. Um, those will just be the ones that are black on that list. So then you can come in here and you can figure out real quick which one of these colors you hadn't selected. So we'll come back in here, we'll click this drop down, we'll set this to sketch up, and uh, we're good to go on our materials. So now we're gonna close out of this and then we'll come in here and we'll just run another test render real quick. And so in order to do that, we're just gonna set this to preliminary and click the play button. And what's gonna happen, what you're gonna see in here is you're gonna see the materials are gonna be a little shinier and a little more realistic looking, but they're not gonna be 100% ready to go yet because we still need to adjust our lighting. But we can go ahead and take a look and kind of see what it spits out. So you can see how as this renders, you can see how it's definitely uh, treating this material a little bit differently. You can see how it's glossier. So you get more of a reflection of where the sun would be and stuff like that. So this material is a lot more realistic, just like this. So you can see how that already made the quality of our render look a little bit better. And you've got some graininess in here because we did this on a preliminary render, but you can see how everything's kind of washed out a little bit. Um, it's a little bit problematic and part of that reason part of the reason for that is because we've still got this set with the exterior lighting So the exterior lighting isn't but isn't generally the best thing for doing a render of an object just like this And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're going to adjust the environment of SketchUp so that it has a better light and so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna um, click on this little sun behind the clouds option to open the environment editor. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and you see how right now the background and sky is set to physical sky. Well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here and you're gonna select um, a spherical sky. And uh, this is a file that you're gonna have to download. And I'm gonna go ahead and link to that in the notes below. Um, I believe that this one, this Studio Light by Rayman is the one we wanna use. And you can get that from kirkathea.net um, in their uh, downloads section. And I'll link to that to the, in the notes below. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here, click this little drop down, and we're gonna find this file that we download. And so I've got this file in here called Studio Light 1 by Rayman, and this is a really good light for interior rendering. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up, and again, I'll link to the download of that below. But you can see how you've got a couple different options in here. I'm gonna select this one for boxlight.hdr. And what this is gonna do is you can see how basically you're, you're bringing in an environment for lighting um, that'll light your object in a different way. And so now if you look in here, you can see how this is kind of being lit by this boxy light and it's kind of reflecting off of this uh, this shiny sphere just like this. This will give you kind of a preview of what that's gonna look like. And you can come in here if you want to and you can kind of adjust um, where that's located by setting a different sky rotation. So like if I set this to 120 degrees or 
180 degrees you can see how that's gonna move where that light is coming from so you can adjust that if you want to um, in this case I think I'm just gonna kind of leave it set at zero so we'll leave that set at zero and then all we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here we're gonna run another test render and then we'll do our final render we just want to make sure everything looks right before we uh, before we dedicate our PC to 20 minutes or so of actual processing time so again we're just gonna set this to preliminary we're gonna hit the play button and what that's gonna do is that's gonna come back in here and that's gonna run another test render like we did before and so that's gonna take just a minute so you can see how now when you come in here you're uh, your materials just look a lot more realistic. You know, you see how everything's not really uh, not really washed out like it was before. It's a lot more uh, wood looking. So it actually looks like a wood bowl with like a glossy finish on it. And so that's kind of what we're looking for. And you know, the one thing I may do is I may adjust my camera angle a little bit so this reflection is somewhere else. But other than that, this is kind of doing what I want it to do. And that's the whole point of this test render that we did right here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust our camera angle real quick so I'm probably gonna make that more over here and then I'm just gonna come in here I'm gonna activate twilight render and I'm gonna render this with a high setting at a higher resolution so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna set this at uh, we'll go ahead and set this at 1920 by 1440 that'll give us a pretty big image just like this and that's kind of locking that to the view proportions. You could uncheck this little chain and uh, set that to a different proportion if you want to. But I'm gonna go ahead and bring this in here and I'm gonna do this on a high setting. So this is gonna be kind of my final render. So I'm just gonna let this run for a while and uh, we'll see what it spits out. All right, so now that your render is done, you can come in here and you can save a copy of your image or do whatever you want with it. So that's where we're going to wrap up today's video. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Uh, if you like this video, um, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting the show by visiting my support me page on my website. That's the sketchupessentials.com slash support. That has everything from links to my Patreon page to uh, links to various plugins and stuff you can purchase to support the show. So all that just helps me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.